So, Al, look, great to have a chance to catch up with you. As a starter for 10, can you share a bit about what Net Support do? I absolutely can. Always good to talk with you, Mark. Yeah, hopefully people have come across the Net Support name. We've been around over 30 years, so we're starting to get an idea of how to do things. Uh, fundamentally, we're, you know, our main focus is as an EdTech vendor. Um, and within that, we kind of look at the, the layers of the school IT requirements when it comes to educational technology. So, so many people will have known us for many years for our classroom instructional technology. Uh, NetSport School was our, is our flagship classroom management product. And that's all about connecting teacher and student and that engagement within the classroom, as well as the testing and assessing. And probably the thing people remember most when we think sort of classroom assessment is that kind of lock, stop and block, the shepherding of a student's activity. Um, alongside that, we make sure we have tools like NetSport DNA that are all about managing that broader IT infrastructure so that fundamentally all the kits available and operational when it's needed. And alongside that, keeping children safe is a big part of what we do as educational technology. So we also provide a wrapper in terms of that keyword monitoring and safeguarding tools to ensure we keep you know, all of our learners as safe as possible. You know, but we've also grow over time. So as part of our portfolio, we have a notification solution, not surprisingly, NetSport Notify, that very much is there to help support that emergency messaging approach. But on bigger infrastructures and sites, it also helps just with communication to staff of key messaging, whether it's technical issues or, fingers crossed, not, but security-related issues. And then we also have um, our move to the cloud, like many vendors, and I'm a firm believer, Mark, as you know, which is all about giving people choice. So we have desktop apps that don't require to use that school bandwidth out, and we also have cloud solutions that really break down and remove that need for the, the physical space to be defined, and, and very much a topic that you and I have spent many a time talking about, like many others, about that concept of blended learning and, and offering that flexibility. So, you know, as a, as a vendor, we kind of very much have developed solutions, really wrapping around all the key areas where there's demand and support needed in schools. Well, there's a lot there, isn't there? Lots of things. But you, you've got a firm grounding in education with a number of different roles. You lead multi-academy trusts. You even run sessions with students within the schools, within the trusts as well. How have your schools adapted over the last 18 months? And from that, has your approach to ed tech purchasing within that sort of uh, hat, as it were, uh, changed? Yeah, that's a really good question, Mark. I, I think one thing that I'm really mindful of is, um, you know, sometimes people's perception is that the, the narrative or the discussion around educational technology and something that we're very passionate about, digital strategy, is something that has been the same, the same kind of concept and questions um, over time. But actually, the, eight, the last 18 months, we've, we've had lots of pressures and challenges but it's also been a real opportunity to learn lots. And we've moved from making decisions about theoretical benefits of impact to actually evidence lessons learned. So I think what we've done as a trust is kind of work backwards, if you like, like many schools. I don't think this journey is in any way unique. Um, we started off across schools in, in, in both the mats that, that I lead, um, very much focusing on that digital equity, making sure that we had a an opportunity for all our learners to engage and utilize technology. And then like all these things, it comes down to, well, what's the core foundations? What's the technology that will actually enable? And the enable kind of fell into the, the pots of, um, how do we deliver effective online teaching and learning in, in some shape or form? Uh, how do we keep our learners safe? And probably one that actually counted as much as anything, I think, in the bigger picture of our children and their welfare was that, it, fostering a better communication, maintaining the links, particularly for our you know, SEN children and that con continuity, but also brokering and supporting families because there was an extra demand and expectation on them. And we all know they're key stakeholders if we're gonna get that success of our children. So we've we kind of learned to stitch those together and they fed into digital strategy, something that I would not claim in my trust is ever a finished article. We're on a journey and it's constantly adapting and that really feeds into that idea that actually the lessons of the last 18 months are key to re-evaluating and reshaping what works and what the opportunities from the lessons learned are moving forward. Um, so those have kind of been kind of key building blocks, the pillars around what we've actually done within the trust. I think from purchasing, and that's a really, really salient point to raise at this point in the narrative, um, one of the nice things from the edtech community, you know, the very much was we have a pandemic, we have a challenge in schools, how do all the vendors and stakeholders help support schools? 
And so naturally, lots of solutions were offered free and available for schools to use to help mitigate challenges. But actually, there comes a, a problem for a school, which is the more choices you get, the harder it is to actually identify which is the best tool for you. How do I choose? And in a positive sense, we've got a really thriving edtech community, not just in the UK, but internationally. So I think there's a collective mindset now, which is when we think about educational technology, there's just as important that narrative about how do we effectively select and choose solutions. So if we're thinking about solutions in the classroom that are delivering curriculum content and engagement, we rightly are looking and saying, well, where is the, the evidence, the pedagogy aligned evidence behind that solution to actually give us the reassurance that it will actually deliver on the, the claims on the brochure and the website. And then, of course, there's other ways to gain that confidence and evidence. So one is about peer assessment, that review of, our, of other schools in our district or in our region, and actually looking at the solutions that work for them and have worked well. Um, collectively, making sure that solutions that you invest in are available to try for free so that you can make sure you make the right decisions. Thinking back to digital strategy and all the stakeholders involved, making sure we're not selecting solutions in a silo, but we're looking what other similar departments within our school, our MAT or our broader district might be using so that we can make sure we can build on other people's skills and experience. And then the final one that kind of wraps around all of that, um, a conversation that I absolutely am teaching you to suck eggs on because this is very much your, your area, is about the role that CPD takes. And, and often that word can be said quite in quite a short sentence and dismissed, but really it's all about how do we build teacher confidence. The confidence to use tools will absolutely lead into the likelihood and success of a, of a solution being embedded. But what we also want to do is spark and encourage innovation. And for innovation, we actually want teachers to go that next step up from confidence to actually have mastery of the solutions. So I think there's a number of strands, but those will be the key ones that we've kind of learned over the last 18 months. Thanks, Al, and, and really detailed and, and uh, comprehensive and, and uh, sort, of, sort of a lovely wrapper of care, particularly around the idea, the ideas in the back about structure and, and, and strategy and, and, and CPD and all of that. Taking what you've learned from that scenario with your multi academy trust and CEO hat on and the rest of it, how has that as um, sort of informed what you're doing as a business? What what have, uh, have Net Support learned from the pandemic and there's still bit so strange and unusual from what you've experienced before engagement with schools uh, so what are the plans for the future what have you learned Al? Well I think the simple answer is that the, the most important thing is to be receptive to learning be receptive to reflect on the solutions you've got and recognize when what was a great solution may not 100% meet needs now because the, the requirements are constantly moving and as a business we are very heavily invested within the education space um, you know, Mark, because you've been involved in many, as many of the people who'll be watching the EdTech show will know, you know, we get involved in supporting schools and working with schools, at events, sharing best practice, resources, and so on. And part of that, of course, is a two-way street, because the closer you are to the coalface, the more invested you are in schools, the more you recognise and hear about the challenges and how you need to adapt. And the world has changed in terms of the EdTech landscape. It might take some time for those lessons to be learnt and for us to move forward, but the key thing that we recognised was about giving people choice. The, the new online blended world, we wanted to say, well, actually schools need to, ideally, thinking back to our CPD narrative, be able to use one solution no matter where the setting. It, it reduces the level of skills and training required, but also provides that flexibility and continuity for learners. So we went away and said, actually, whilst we've got nearly 30 years experience with NetSport School in terms of instructional technology. We can take the best of that, the, the things that we've learned and adapted over the years, and we can deliver that as a cloud-based platform. That was the birth of Classroom Cloud, a new solution that delivers that online classroom learning experience for instructional technology. And then we also said, you know, with that accessibility to digital and technology also comes risk. So we can take the experience and lessons learned from NetSport DNA and bring that core safeguarding, monitoring component, and in integrate that within Classroom Cloud so that we're giving children access to digital resources but at the same time putting the safety net wrapper around it. And we know that much of the narrative when it comes to safeguarding is about empowering learners, so we also wanted to build in things like the resources for, for young people to seek support and advice or, or you know, report concerns themselves, very much aligned with current narrative about the, the, the risks online. So that's really evolved and like all these things I think you have to be big enough as a vendor to say 
don't have all the answers. I need to actually co-produce with the people who are going to be using it. I have to be willing to take on board their differing ideas from different scenarios and different international markets and pull the common strands from that. And what you end up with, hopefully, is a solution that not only meets everybody's needs, but isn't overcomplicated. You, you, you retain that core requirement, which is if it's easy to set up and it's easy to use and it's easy for learners to engage in, you've got a much better chance of it being embedded and schools getting the impact they were hoping for from it. You mentioned right through there some really important words that um, must have resonate with me, as you well know, Al, you know, the P word of pedagogy. Uh, you yep. talked about relationships, working with, uh, you know, and co-creating the products alongside uh, the teachers and schools that you work with. Um, how, how do you work with the edtech sector to make sure you are really sort of always on the pulse uh, when it comes to thinking about um, sort of tweaks, new features, new solutions? How, how do you go about engaging with the community, Al? It's a multi-layered approach, you know, I mean, on one level we talk, you know, personally I'm chair of a number of multi-academy trusts, I work with the Regional Schools Commissioner, I'm involved in schools on a daily basis. But we also have many people within the organisation who are pedagogy based, who've got that teaching background and experience that bring those ideas in. But we foster very much the community, Mark. So whether it's the, the new magazine we've launched where we share resources across the community and of course we learn from that at the same time, whether it's the online resources on Netsport Radio, whether it's the event that you and I do on a monthly basis, the Check It Out show where we highlight the best new technology and solutions available internationally. All of those sharing and supporting of the community come with a sideline which is we actually learn, we get fresh ideas, we understand the narrative, we recognise the current challenges. So I think pulling all those together, going to trade shows and having other vendors on our stands, inviting people to come and em embrace and share their best practice, they all feed into the kind of the narrative that we are, which is, you know, at our heart is education. One thing I wanted to mention, going back to the P word, Al, ped pedagogy, how does pedagogy inform and evidence informed and, and uh, evidence related uh, um, efficacy around ed tech um, is, is huge and it's really important both for schools to, like you say, get that return on their investment and know that it's going to have those impacts. What have Net Support done as an organisation to uh, reinforce and, and get outside kind of critique of the software at Net Support to ensure that that pedagogical efficacy is still at the heart of what you're doing, alongside all the other things you've mentioned? What, is, there, is there any other things that the, the business have done to try and reinforce that? Absolutely, Mark. And I think one of the things that, you know, is very clear to me is you, you've got to practice what you preach. I'm always talking about evidence-based solutions and the way to go out and find the right solutions. So as a business, uh, we went and looked, well, who are the, the people that are providing that best external evidence? And we went to Education Alliance Finland, presented our solutions and said, take it away, assess and review it against your framework of standards in Finland, put it in front of teachers that work as part of your entity, and you tell us where we're good and just as importantly where we're bad. You know, and I was absolutely chuffed to bits that our new solution, Classroom Cloud, came out with a 94% rating, one of the highest that they've, they've achieved, and very much recognised the work we'd put in to aligning it with the pedagogical standards, making sure that it's fit for purpose, meeting both learners' and teachers' needs. And I think that's a really key one that I would encourage and embrace any vendor to go away and do. So thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Before we go, um, two quick things. Uh, well, I want to first of all ask uh, a question around uh, a book you've written recently, um, because I, I found through writing books and, and sharing myself, it gives you real legitimacy and authenticity. So could you share a moment a little bit about the book you've recently written? And then uh, beyond that, where can people find out more about you? You talk about this sharing online and, and uh, things that you're doing and, and, and resources and all this sort of stuff. Where can people find all of this stuff from you, Al? Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, well, not surprising, on the EdTech show, my book is called The Secret EdTech Diary, and it's very much focused around my learning journey of educational technology, reflecting on the past, but I think really that key is the last 18 months, the lessons learned, and how we take what we've learned and moved it forward. That's available on all good bookshops right now. In terms of the bigger picture, then I would really encourage everybody, please head over to netsportsoftware.com. You'll find all of our portfolio products. You'll also find loads of free resources, whether it's our e-safety guides, the digital strategy guide that you and I co-authored, Mark, and plenty of other resources that are there, along with our new magazine, Rise. Um, if you want to connect on Twitter, then head over and connect to either Netsport Group or Al Kingsley underscore edu. But most importantly, keep the discussion, keep the narrative, and for the new EdTech show, keep doing that amazing work. Really, really pleased with the format. Lovely. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Al. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me today and uh, hopefully we'll catch up soon. Thanks.